There's nothing like the fire of the old agronomist or the old farmer to keep researchers on track. There's a tendency for us to walk into a paddock or approach a need in production agriculture or environmental management and look at it with a classic reductionist view. We control all the other variables, change the variable of interest and come up with a solution. And that solution could be absolutely useless. It might be scientifically sound, but it doesn't fit the farming system. The specific example I'm thinking of is an extreme example. Uh, a consultant had seen that this particular paddock was extremely acidic and needed lime. And the farmer had limed for his lucerne, but the lucerne was awful. They showed me the soil test. The farmer hadn't actually seen, nor had the consultant, that the electrical conductivity was four decisiemens per metre. The site was not only acidic, it was extremely saline. But salinity wasn't the flavour of the month or the year, and so they'd missed what was the primary limitation to growth. So just because a paddock might be acidic or phosphorus deficient doesn't mean that you shouldn't look at the other factors limiting plant growth. It could be that something else in that soil test is far more serious. And even then, so what if a paddock's acidic? Take the example of a southwest facing slope on rocky ground. Um, it's probably not got a great productive potential. It might be better rather than to lime it to simply use it as a microlina pasture, a native pasture that will provide feed for stock all year round. And we don't have to worry about liming because liming will probably never pay for itself in that sort of circumstance. So my message is that we need to look at the whole soil test, not the latest trendy factor. And we need to take that soil test in the context of the whole farming system and interpret it according to the productive potential of the land. This is the sort of situation where we need the cranky old agronomist like the late Brett Butler, or possibly the even crankier Peter Simpson at Goulburn. They were two guys who used to keep researchers on their toes because they'd be able to say, yes, but within the context of my grazing system or my cropping system, your advice is probably worth 10% of the yield production in this country, and the cost might be 50%. Have you considered that, Mr. Researcher? So there's nothing like the fire of the old agronomist or the old farmer to keep researchers on track. And we, it, <laughs> it's not good for our egos, but it's great for production agriculture that researchers are kept honest by old farmers and old consultants. <laughs>